Who was the worst boss you ever had? Did they scream at you or threaten to fire you? Was that it? I bet you never had a boss that beat you or urinated on you or forced you to eat dog poop. This is what Masamichi Tsuchida, the owner of a popular host club, did to his employees. His atrocious behavior would be the reason he ended up boiled in a pot after he was murdered by his two employees. Host clubs were created in 1970s Japan. These nightclubs hired attractive men and women who would lavish attention on their customers while encouraging them to buy expensive drinks. Their popularity dwindled by the 80s, but the occupation experienced a resurgence in the late 90s after a variety show called Tokyo Heads began featuring hosts and hostesses on the program. And riding that wave was a charismatic host named Masamichi Tsuchida. He was regularly featured on TV and became so popular that he was dubbed the Emperor of West Tokyo and Mr. Charisma. After years of appearing in the media, his business grew rapidly and he was able to purchase several clubs throughout Tokyo. But when the cameras weren't around, Tsuchida was known to be a horrifyingly violent boss to both his male and female employees. All of his employees were afraid of him and his reputation for violence even terrified hosts from other clubs. Since Uchida was originally based in West Tokyo, he had very deep ties to the criminal underworld, and he was a gangster in all but name. One host who knew him said, Mr. Tsuchida was more than a Yakuza. He was even more violent than a Yakuza. He was sadistic. Punching and kicking were commonplace. He would order his employees to eat the live fish that he kept in the store's aquarium, or he would shove dog feces in their mouths. Another host that used to work for Suchida claimed that Suchida once was so angry that he beat up a host from another club for no reason. He also pulled a gun on a woman in an elevator and threw metal ashtrays at the hostesses he thought were making mistakes. According to that host, there was another host that worked there named Yukia, who was the number one host at one of Suchida's clubs. Despite contributing to the company, Tsuchida became enraged that Yukiya didn't pass the microphone to a customer for karaoke, and so Tsuchida would later force a microphone inside of Tsuchida's rear end and screamed, Are you a dog? Say doggy! Say doggy! Yukiya immediately quit. Despite a major recession throughout Asia in the late 90s, Tsuchida's name alone was able to attract customers and keep his clubs afloat. And no matter how vicious he could be, his host continued to work as the money flowed in. And this explains why so many stayed, because their livelihoods depended on him. However, the good times started to end in 2008 when local authorities started the Kabukicho cleanup operation to improve the city's image and to get rid of the Yakuza. And so, they began to enforce the old laws. As a result, host clubs were banned from operating at night and scouting for customers. This led to the Yakuza influence in Kabukicho to diminish greatly. And while other host clubs began to clean up their image and diversify their services, Tsuchida either couldn't or refused to change. He continued to rule his clubs with an iron fist. And with less money coming in, his employees began to become less tolerant of Tsuchida's abhorrent behavior. While this was happening, one person who seemed to give the bulk of Tsuchida's abuse was 26-year-old host Takuya Abe. The slightest mistake would get Abe either beaten up or forced to dance around naked. If Suchida wanted Abe to pay for lunch and Abe was broke, Suchida would beat him up, and even being submissive would not stop Suchida. If Suchida saw Abe cowering, he would urinate on him. In the fall of 2010, Takuya Abe was caught by police when he was passing out flyers to potential customers outside of a train station. As a result, Suchida's operating license was suspended and he had to pay a 10 million yen fine, which is over $71,000 to date. Despite Tsuchida forcing Abe to go out there in the first place, Tsuchida blamed Abe and told him the fine was Abe's fault and he would have to pay it back. Of course, Abe didn't have the money. Who would? And this made things only worse for Abe because Tsuchida started harassing him at home, demanding to be paid. Abe had reached his breaking point. Another victim of Tsuchida was 31-year-old Ichiro Genji, who was the manager at one of the clubs called the Balakan Host Club. While Genji was not abused to the extent as Abe, he was berated and beaten if there wasn't enough money coming in. Genji had enough. 
He wasn't going to be a victim anymore, so he approached Abe with a simple plan, kill their boss. And Abe immediately agreed, because he knew Tsuchida would only get worse. On the morning November 25th, 2010, Masamichi Tsuchida told his wife that he was going to work and he would be back on the weekend. She spoke to him throughout the morning and everything was fine. Later that day, she repeatedly tried to call him, but when she couldn't reach him, she began to worry. Tsuchida had always told his wife that if she couldn't get in contact with him for an entire day, then to call the police to file a missing persons report. That day, Tsuchida met up with Abe at the club under the pretext of wanting to talk about the fine. Abe's and Genji's plan was simple. Genji managed to get a gun from an acquaintance, which is nearly impossible due to Japan's straight gun laws, and gave it to Abe before leaving. Abe shot Tsuchida in the heart and in the eye. It is believed that Tsuchida died instantly. He put the body in a garment bag, then called his friend Shitura Ano to help move it as well as a large pot and stove he purchased in advance to take to Abe's father's house. After they arrived at the house, it was time for the next step in their plan, getting rid of the body. Abe had his wife take his father Hideki to a bar to go drinking for the night. He then called Genji, and Genji in turn called his ex-wife and his sister to buy an industrial pipe cleaner that contained sodium hydroxide at a concentration of 95% to dissolve the body. Tsuchida was dismembered and put into a large pot called a zundo pot. A zundo pot is a very large pot that restaurants use to make large amounts of broth for ramen. Abe poured the pipe cleaner into the pot, turned it on, and waited for the body to dissolve. But dissolving a body is easier said than done, and no matter how long the body boiled, the flesh wouldn't dissolve. As night fell, Abe's father came back home only to be greeted with an awful sight. His son was stewing a corpse. But Abe's father didn't call the police. Instead, he stood in front of that large pot and began to stir. Both father and son took turns stirring the pot of chemicals and human remains until sunrise the next day. By that time, Suchida's body had melted down to the bones. The smaller bones were crushed by Abe's father and dumped into a drainage ditch. The next day, Takuya Abe and his wife went to Lake Tama and dumped the gun. Then, the Abe family packed the remaining bones in a duffel bag and along with their dog, traveled to the Akigawa River. All three Abes pretended to have a barbecue to hide their true intentions of dumping the remains. It didn't take long before the police became involved. And just like she promised, Suchida's wife called the police to report him missing when she couldn't get in contact with him after a day. Abe and Genji were immediate suspects due to CCTV footage outside the club on the day of Suchida's disappearance, but the pair denied knowing where he was. Abe and Genji finally did it. They got away with a perfect crime, or so they thought. Although the police couldn't prove that a crime took place, they never stopped investigating Suchida's disappearance. Abe and Genji were always suspects, but there wasn't anything concrete to arrest them on. In July 2012, the pair were questioned again and this time, they admitted that they had a fight with Tsuchida and his cell phone was broken during the fight. Then they admitted that they took his phone and threw it out of a car window on a mountain road. The pair stuck to their story that they didn't know where he was. The police found the broken phone and arrested Abe and Genji for destruction of property and the two received a suspended sentence. So you're probably wondering why the police didn't just arrest the two most obvious suspects. Well, it turns out it wasn't that simple. There were a lot of people who hated Tsuchida. As the police investigated and spoke to Tsuchida's former employees and others who knew him, they learned to the extent of how hated he was. No one cared that he was gone, and some even hoped that he died. With Tsuchida's reputation, there was little hope of finding him alive. A host who knew him alleges, He had a lot of troubles, especially with money. There are countless people who have gone missing under Mr. Tsuchida. In terms of women, I heard that he was married to a prostitute when he was young and that he pulled in a lot of money. There were countless employees and female customers who had accumulated debt and who had been driven into a corner by Mr. Tsuchida. It seems that there are many people who are pleased with this case behind the scenes. The police got their first real lead when they spoke with Akira, no surname given. He was Balakin's former number one host. He was so popular that he was able to bring in up to 6 million yen worth of liquor sales monthly or over $42,000. And Akira knew everything. 
When investigators began questioning him in 2013, he kept quiet and refused to answer. The police questioned him four times before Akira agreed to speak with them. So why did Akira finally decide to talk nearly three years later? During the trial, Akira said, I told my parents that I was going to the prosecutor's office tomorrow, and they said, go tell them everything. Even if you end up being charged with a crime, we will always be by your side. The police learned that Genji spoke freely to him about their plans to kill Tsuchida. Because Akira was making so much money, Genji asked Akira repeatedly for money to get a gun, and Akira refused each time. Every time Genji and Abe brought up the subject, Akira would tell them that it was a bad idea. It appeared that once the pair were sure that Akira wasn't going to join, Genji started to threaten Akira to keep his mouth shut or they would kill him too. Then, the police received a tip from an anonymous witness who said they saw Abe and his father return to the house with a large box and other suspicious items. The police came to the conclusion that Tsushida might have been dismembered and so, in April 2013, the police searched Abe's father's home. But they couldn't find any blood or DNA inside, so they hired a contractor to dig up the septic tank. The police found a part of a jawbone and a titanium tooth implant. Because there is a three-year statute of limitations of destruction of a corpse, the police immediately arrested Takuya Abe, his father Hideki Abe, and Ichiro Genji for destruction of a corpse and abandonment. The jawbone was so badly degraded that DNA could not be matched. Their only viable clue was the tooth implant. They found the manufacturer of the implant and told the police that 600 of those implants were sold to dentists throughout Tokyo. It took weeks of work, but the investigators were able to question dozens of dental practices to account for all of the patients with implants. The investigators were able to confirm that the implant they found in the septic tank belonged to Masamichi Tsuchida. Abe and Genji refused to admit any wrongdoing and stuck to their story that they had no idea what happened to Tsuchida. But investigators presented the two with overwhelming evidence and so they confessed to the murder. What shocked the police further was that there were eight people involved in either the murder or the cover-up. This included Ichido's ex-wife and his sister, Takio's wife and his father Hideki, his friend Shatuna Ono, and Taira Masayoshi who gave Genji the gun. In November 2013, Takio Abe and Ichido Genji were indicted on murder charges. However, Genji would never make it to trial. On December 19, 2013, Ichido Genji ended his own life in a detention center. During Takuya Abe's trial, Tsuchida's violent personality was revealed. Takuya Abe's wife Atsuko testified and said, He will come home with a swollen face from being beaten. He said that Tsuchida was so hard on him and he didn't even get a day off. And so Takuya said that he should kill him. I told him that it was wrong to kill and Takuya said, If I don't do it, my life will be ruined. After I prodded him, he told me, If you don't understand, it's okay. I'm going to kill him. Akira testified, quote, Takio was often beaten by Tsuchida-san and said that he wanted to kill him several times. When the prosecution asked Abe's father why he covered up for his son, he said, quote, I didn't want my son to become a criminal. Takio Abe was convicted of murder and destruction of a corpse. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison. His wife and his father were given suspended sentences. The sentences for the other accomplices are unknown at this time.